It's another awesome, beautiful day that the Most High made. And we are all here and we must give him the glory. Today we're going to be talking about Israel's yesterday's glory. The truth of the matter is Israel was yesterday's glory. Israel was yesteryear's testimony. Israel used to have it going on, but not no more. Now, it wouldn't be fair to not begin with Deuteronomy 7, 6. I need someone to get that. It's not in my notes. But we must start off with the way it used to be. Let's get that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. This is how Israel used to be. This is the yesterday, the former glory. All right? We had it going on. We had it going on. No one can take that from Israel, okay? We used to have it going on. So now I want to bring out this expression, this phrase that is used called the glory days. Somebody read glory days on the screen. Glory days, the most successful time that someone or something has experienced. A past period of better times. That's exactly what glory days mean. You used to have it going on. Okay? A lot of men, we grow up, and then we look back at our old pictures and we be like, dang, man, I was tight. Man, I used to have the muscles. Or, man, I used to be strong. But then life happened. Okay? And things are not the same the way they used to be. And that's exactly how Israel as a nation was. A lot of people do not want to deal with reality. Israel used to have it going on. Now I'm going to read a Surrey, okay, which agrees perfectly with this scripture in Deuteronomy 7, 6. Now, I got to wait for Surrey okay. to, to quit because she just went off, you know what I mean? With the scripture in Thank you, Suri. But this is going to be Suri 2-1-22. That is 2-122. It says, O children of Israel, remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you and that I preferred you over the worlds. It doesn't say I am preferring you over all worlds as in current. It's talking about the way it used to be. The way it used to be. A lot of you have houses and some of us have been fortunate to have a brand new house. And when you look at that brand new house, man, on that first year, couple years, then after time goes by, times go by, decades pass, the house is nothing the way it used to be. And that's how Israel was, okay? So now I want to tell you something, and this is a quote. You don't have to write it down. But you are entering these Israelite schools Getting your ears tickled to identify with Israel. To identify with Israel is to identify with the devil himself. Because let me tell you something. Israel was the most wicked nation that ever existed. This is going to be 1st Ezra 1.24. This is the book of 1st Ezra chapter 1 verse 24. As for the things that came to pass in his time, they were written in former times concerning those that sinned and did wickedly against the Lord above all people and kingdoms. Above all people and kingdoms. Okay, keep going. 
and how they grieved him exceedingly. Grieved who? God. God. Keep going. So that the words of the Lord rose up against Israel. Now God's words came against Israel. God was with Israel. Now the words that he's speaking in the book of Esdras is actually against Israel. Now, I want to talk about the kings of Israel. Now, I want somebody to read what's on the screen, starting at the kingdom. The kingdom of Israel, or the northern kingdom of Samaria, existed as an independent state until 722 BCE, when it was conquered by the Neo-Assyrian Empire. The kingdom of Judah, or the southern kingdom, existed as an independent state until 586 BCE, when it was conquered by the Neo-Babylonian Empire. All right, somebody read the stats beginning at 2000. 2,609 years since we had a king in Judah, 2,745 years since we had a king in Israel, the northern kingdom. All right, so it's been over 2,600 years since we had a king in Judah. And it's been almost 2,800 years since we had a king in the northern kingdom of Israel, okay? The southern kingdom represents Judah. The northern kingdom represents all the other 10 tribes making up the northern kingdom. It's been that long. So just think about it. Something must have really happened for God to quit giving us kings. All right, we talk about forgiveness, 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 but just because God forgave you doesn't mean that things is going to go exactly the way they used to be, the way it used to be. Now, the last king we had in Judah was Zedekiah. All right, this is about 596 BCE, okay? Now, I want you to go to Jeremiah 22, 30, and I want you to read that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 30. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David, and ruling any more in Judah. Now, ever since God said that prophecy, the children of Israel, specifically of the southern kingdom, did not have a king anymore, okay? The last king they had was Zedekiah, okay? So when this prophecy was spoken, it was roughly about 597 BCE. Now the next king we had that next year, Zedekiah, Okay, 596 all the way to 586 was his reign. And this is all BCE before the common era. This was the last king we had. It's been about that long. Over 2,600 years. Ever since God spoke that word in Jeremiah 2230. When he said, no more kings are going to reign in Judah anymore that tells you how God's word is so accurate all right now I want to show you some more prophecies concerning the kingship of Israel this is going to be first Kings twenty two seventeen. this is Micaiah all right he prophesied this roughly around 874 BCE through 853 BCE. Let's keep going. This is the book of First Kings, chapter 22, verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. All right. So this prophecy is speaking of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel do not have a master. They do not have a master. And what was actually going on was 
the northern kingdom, King Ahab and Jehoshaphat was going to war against Syria and they wanted some prophecy. And so the true prophet Micaiah, he was a true prophet. All right, he represents the Gentile messenger and he told them that he seen all Israel with no master, no king. All right, and at this time, Ahab was the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat was only the king of Judah. That's it. And so, long story short, they went to war. Ahab told Jehoshaphat, take, Ahab told Jehoshaphat, you put on your royal robes and I will go disguised. They all were told to fight with nobody but only the king of Israel. So they were going to kill Jehoshaphat. But Jehoshaphat, he cried out. And so a soldier at random shot without even aiming and the arrow hit the king of Israel. And the true king of Israel at that time died. Now notice, Jehoshaphat was not the king of Israel. Even though Jesus is in his lineage. He was from the royal tribe of Judah. He was still not considered the king of Israel. Because this is speaking metaphorically of the future. That the kingdom was going to go both from Judah and the northern kingdom and was going to go to a Gentile heathen nation. All right, I want you to read 2 Chronicles 18, 16. It's going to say the same thing. This is the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 16. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. All right, to this day, there is no master over the nation of Israel, okay? Over these Christian churches, none of that. The closest thing you have to a master is your boy Paul. The apostle Paul represented Ahab in that story. He is the king of the Christian church. He is the founder of Christianity, all right? He is the Jesus of the New Testament, all right? So, now I want you to read Matthew 6, 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. All right, so you cannot serve God and Paul. You can't serve God and Paul. A lot of y'all think y'all worshiping Jesus, but y'all worshiping Paul, okay? The Apostle Paul came with that religion, Christianity. And you cannot serve both God and Paul. You're going to have to pick one. And I tell you today, you are serving two masters. Now I want to keep going and I want to go to 2 Ezra 2.10. This is the book of 2 Ezra chapter 2 verse 10. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem which I would have given unto Israel. All right, so that says exactly what it means, but I want someone to read another translation, all right? This is going to be the good news translation. Somebody read that. The Lord says to Ezra, announce to my new people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I have planned to give to Israel. Which I had planned to give Israel. Now let's just sit here and let's just meditate on what we are hearing. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 2, verse 10. The Lord says to Ezra, Announce to my new people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I plan to give to 
Israel. Now, all the precepts, when God is saying, you will know who is my chosen, who is my chosen, mine elect, mine elect. This is all going to the Gentile heathen nation, which only could mean the nation of Islam, who has been given the shepherd. Muhammad was a shepherd. Now, I have more honor and respect for Israelite camps that don't believe the Apocrypha than for those who do believe the Apocrypha and then try to claim that this is still talking about Israel. OK, you guys are way off. The kingdom is going to a Gentile heathen nation, Islam. Now, first off, the Lord is speaking. The Lord says to Ezra, announce to my new people. Pause. Take a breather. Take a breather, bruh. That I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem which I had planned to give to Israel. Now, I want someone to go to Matthew 21, 43 real quick. All right? Don't you run. Don't you change the channel. Stay tuned in because you know what? You have been cornered in. You cannot escape. Let's get that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 43. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. And given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. All right. That word nation actually means Gentile, heathen, non-Israelite. So here we have Ezra. And here we have Jesus. Peace be upon them both. Both speaking of the kingdom going to a new people. All right. Now I want you to go back to verse 11. Their glory also will I take unto me. And give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I had prepared for them. All right, so the glory that was going to be on Israel, he said he's going to take that and he's going to give it to his new people. Okay, if you read the Bible, it literally calls them his chosen. Another word is his elect. And we're going to get into that. All right. Now, let's keep going in verse 12. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Keep going. Go, and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. All right, so Jesus, he talked like this as well. But I want to read another translation, back to the good news translation. And I want to read verse 11. I'll read it. I will take the dazzling light of my presence away from Israel and give to my new people the eternal temple that I have prepared for Israel. The tree of life will fill the air around them with its fragrance. They will never have to work. They will never grow tired. Act and you will receive. Pray that the number of the days you have to wait will be reduced. Even now, the kingdom has been prepared for you. So stay alert. He is speaking to his chosen. He is speaking to his new people. Now I'm going to show you a scripture in the New Testament where Jesus is saying some of the same things. This is the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. Keep going. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Okay, so the elect is talking about the same people in the book of 2 Ezra chapter 2. His Gentiles, his chosen. That's why it says, pray that the days will be short. Okay, this is going into all flesh being saved. I want you to read Mark 13, 20. This is the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 20. And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he had chosen, he has shortened the days. All right. He didn't say Israel. He didn't say Israel. Jesus is not a hypocrite. He just told him in the previous chapters that the kingdom was going to be taken away from Israel. And given to a Gentile heathen nation. Now let's go back to where we was just at. And read that scripture again. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you. That they may be shortened. 
the kingdom is already prepared for you. That's the exact same scripture Jesus quoted in Matthew. All right. Pray for the days to be short because the elect is not Israel. The elect is going into his chosen. Now we're going to come back to that, but I want you to go to 2 Ezra 2.33. I, Esdras, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the Lord. They set me at nothing. All right. I went to Israel first. Okay, I followed the order. But now let's keep going. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. All right, so he is saying, O ye heathen, that hear and understand. Now let's go to Ezekiel 3, 5, and 6, and 7. To prove that the other nations listen. But Israel don't listen. Israel do not listen. And he said go to them that hear and understand. Now let's get that. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 5. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language. But to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech. And of an hard language. Those are the Gentiles. Now keep going. Whose words thou canst now understand. Those are the Gentiles. Keep going. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will now hearken unto thee. For they will now hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. All the house of Israel. Okay. And he said the other nations would listen. All right. And then in verse seven, he says, Israel will not listen. So we just prove to you that this other nation he is speaking of is not Israel because they actually listen. Now I want to elaborate on this shepherd. All right. The word shepherd is a term used, okay, for those who watch over sheep. Now Moses, he was a shepherd, okay? David, he was a shepherd, okay? And guess who else was a shepherd? Mohammed was a shepherd as a young boy. He was a shepherd first, okay? Now, these are facts. I'm not lying. I'm only showing you stuff that's in the Bible, and I'm showing you things that are facts, okay? Now I want to prove to you some other connections with this shepherd, okay? He said he shall give you an everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world, okay? So now I want to show you how God speaks to a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger, and that was Cyrus. Let's get that in Isaiah 44 and 28. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. He is my what? My shepherd. And shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. All right, so Cyrus, a man of another nation, was in charge of building a house for Israel. All right. Now, I want you to go to Isaiah 45, verse 1. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two levered gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Now, there's not one scripture in the Bible where it says, Thus says the Lord to my anointed, except unto Cyrus. Now, Christ actually means anointed, anointed one in his anointing. But there's no scripture where it says, thus says the Lord to Jesus, my anointed. No, it says that of a Gentile man. OK, this is deep. This is strong. No doubt. Millions of Jews were jealous at the hearing of that. 
All right. So now I want to show you some more. I want to go back to where we was at. This is going to be second Ezra. And I want you to go to verse 35 now. This is the book of second Ezra chapter two, verse 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. So he's telling his new people. He's telling his chosen that is not Israel. Be prepared for the reward of the kingdom. Wow, that is deep. That is deep. Now I want you to go to verse 36. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. Keep going. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad. Giving thanks unto him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. Keep going. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. All right. So that is why he was speaking to the Gentiles. He was speaking to the Gentiles because he's given the Gentiles what belongs to Israel. It's that simple. Even a child can get this. Even a child can get this. Okay. Now, Israel was not his elect. Israel was chosen, but something happened. And I'm going to show you some scriptures where a lot of people get confused and they think that Israel is his chosen because it talks about Israel being God's chosen. But something happened. Israel became rejected. All right. Israel became rejected. And let me get that scripture for you real quick, because some people don't know that I brought that scripture out. I'm going to show you a scripture that both the southern and the northern kingdom were both rejected. This is going to be 2 Kings 17.20. It's on the screen. This is the book of 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 20. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. All right, so to prove this is talking about all Israel, I want you to go to verse 18. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Keep going. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. They followed after the northern kingdom. So how dumb does that look when people say, oh, he's given the kingdom to the northern kingdom now. He took it from Judah to give it to the northern kingdom. But it was the northern kingdom's fault why Judah failed. So we have the scripture now that God took the kingdom from Israel. And not only that, he rejected all the seed of Israel. So now let's go to Isaiah 42 and 1. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect. This is speaking of the Gentile messenger. He was elected. Keep going. In whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. This man is a Gentile messenger going to the Gentiles. Now go to verse 10. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles, and the inhabitants thereof. Keep going! Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountain. All right, so now he's going to the Gentiles, and the first nation that comes up is Kedar. All right, that's deep right there. And that's the same race as the Gentile messenger. So a lot of these people, they read Isaiah 42 and thinking that he's talking about Israel, but he told Israel their songs would be limitations, mournings, okay? And now he's telling another nation to sing a new song. So now let's go back to where we was at. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 2, verse 36. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. All right. So this is going into the Gentiles, okay? Fleeing the darkness, okay? Receiving the everlasting kingdom. Keep going. 
Oh, receive the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. That has called you to the heavenly kingdom. Now, they have something to be excited about. All right, so now I want you to go to Isaiah 45 and 4. Because we talked about the elect in Isaiah 42. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 4. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. Though thou hast not known me. He's talking to Cyrus. That's why he said for Jacob my servant's sake. Now he's talking about Cyrus. Then he said Israel. Okay, then he says, Cyrus, because he says, mine elect. And that's why he said, I called you by name, even though you don't even know me. All right. So now I'm going to prove that. Let's go to Isaiah 65, 15. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. This is the new people. I'm going to cause Israel to become a curse for my chosen. And the Lord is going to kill you. And he's going to call his servants. Notice his people, his chosen, his elect, his servants. They all speaking of the same people by another name. Now I'm going to show you another scripture. How the Gentiles are going to inherit Israel. This is going to be Isaiah 65, 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Keep going. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. He's not talking about Israel or he would say Israel. Okay, God has moved on. He's moved on. And he says they're going to build houses and they are going to live in them. Not like Israel. The Bible says Israel's house will be left desolate. Okay, so the houses of Israel, others will inhabit. And we just read in Isaiah 42, a popular scripture, okay, amongst Muslims and amongst truth seekers. But Israelites, they dodge this scripture because it says in verse 11, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voices, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Now, Kedar is the second eldest of Ishmael. And we just read about houses in Israel. Houses will be inhabited by others. And here we bring up the nation of Ishmael. See, the Bible is very spot on. It is very spot on. OK, there's a lot of of stuff in the Bible that a lot of you people are neglecting, okay? I challenge you to search the previous scriptures. This is going to help you to spread the truth of Islam. You have to know the Bible, okay? There is truth. There is types and shadows in the Bible, and we are commanded to search them out. Now I want to go to Zephaniah 113 and see the difference. He's speaking to Israel. Let's keep going. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. That's talking about Israel. Now let's go back real quick to Isaiah 65, 22. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. All right, that's all I need, because that's speaking of the Gentiles. Now go back. Verse 13. Therefore their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. That's the difference. The Gentiles are going to inhabit houses, okay? But the Israelites are going to have houses that other people are going to inhabit. It's the difference. It is the reverse. All right, so we got a little bit to go, and I want to show you some more. I want to show you some more. Now, this is going to be 2 Ezra chapter 3, verse 27. 
This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 27. And so thou gavest thy city over into the hands of thine enemies. Are their deeds then any better than inhabit Babylon, that they should therefore have the dominion over Zion? For when I came thither, and had seen impieties without number, then my soul saw many evil doers in this thirtieth year, so that my heart failed me. For I have seen how thou sufferest them sinning, and hast spared wicked doers, and has destroyed thy people, and has preserved thine enemies, and has not signified it. I do not remember how this way may be left. Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? Or is there any other people that knoweth thee beside Israel? He was blind. <laughs> Ezra didn't realize that God had other messengers. God had other prophets. God had another people. Israel, his people, became stiff-necked. And God moved on. So when you read the book of Esdras, you see that Ezra is in his feelings. He can't get how God chose another people just like you. You can't get it. You can't get it. You so stuck in the psalm book. You see the Bible talks about Israel and how God is the God of Israel and none else in his statutes. He has not dealt so with any other nation. That psalm book is closed. It is closed. That's why he made a new covenant. So now he's telling this other nation to sing a new song. And what's happening? Ezra just can't get it. All right. He just can't move on. He's sitting on the side of his bed with his boo. She telling him she done and he just don't get it. All right. Now I want you to keep going. Or what generation has so believed thy covenants as Jacob? And yet their reward appeareth not. And their labor had no fruit, for I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth, and think not upon thy commandments. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell in the world, and so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. He is in his feelings. <laughs> so look how God just literally bombed him. He said, go to my heathen. Tell them I'm giving the kingdom to them that I was going to give to Israel. And he's still harping on the past. He's still in the glory days. But Israel, thy fervent lover, he can't get over the breakup. Okay. So now we're going to read 2nd Ezra chapter 4, 1 and 2, and we'll be done. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer, and said, Thy heart hath gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High? You don't know what God has. Shut up. Stop crying. Stop complaining. God has moved on. He said a whole bunch of nothing in that angel's ears. And he said, man, you've gone too far. You have gone too far. You are speaking of things you don't know. Ezekiel is the truth. That's the easy kill. He literally says, if I would have sent you to the other nations... They would have listened. But all of Israel are impudent, stiff-necked, and they will not listen. So we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this. It is time for us now to get in these scripts, shall we? We shall.